Whoa, it's the illusion reporting from somewhere on spaceship Earth for another sober Wednesday. We're here for one more sober Wednesday. I don't know how long we've been doing this. We've been doing it a while, but uh, I think six months by now, right? Most almost mo almost of the Wednesdays of 2021, we've been here. So, uh, this is this is an hour live stream dedicated to those who are suffering from mental health issues, suicidal thoughts. No, Al, not in the back right now, please. Please, not now. I'll show you how it works later. Okay. I know, but I'm doing my thing right now. So this uh, this live stream is de dedicated for the next hour to those who suffer mental health issues, addiction to uh, drugs, alcohol, cookies, sex, gambling. People are just struggling in general, man. This hour is for you so that I ask anyone who showed up on this live stream to be respectful. And if you don't have anything pertinent to say in the chat that is being of service to people that are suffering, I just ask you not to chime in. We got plenty of other streams to uh, do whatever we do, but this hour is dedicated to those who suffer. And um, generally speaking, I start out with the serenity prayer. <sighs> sure. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Oh, that wisdom to know the difference. Amen. And uh, then I then I remind you, dude, that this, this is really like for people who are suffering. So just please be respectful, moderators. You can run, run a heavy wrench. And... Um, then I like to read chapter five, how it works from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. This is not an AA meeting. We're not affiliated with AA. In fact, we don't believe in anonymity here. And uh, this is this is a 12-step uh, a program, one size fits all. Just to replace the word alcoholic with whatever it is that's troubling you, man. Basically, it's for, for people who are trying to get closer to God. It's usually there's a reason that you're being blocked from God, and that is... An addiction to something. A lot of people are addicted to food, drama, negativity. Yeah, drugs and alcohol are almost the easy ones to overcome because the target's right in your face. And um, so with that said, Chapter 5, How It Works with the Big Book, Alcoholics Anonymous, page 58. Rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. Those who do not recover are people who cannot or will not completely give themselves to the simple program, usually men and women who are constitutionally incapable of being honest with themselves. There are such unfortunates. They are not at fault. They seem to have been born that way. They are naturally incapable of grasping and developing a manner of living which demands rigorous honesty. Their chances are less than average. There are those two who suffer from grave emotional and mental disorders, but many of them do recover if they have the capacity to be honest. Our stories disclose in a general way what we used to be like, what happened, and what we are like now. If you've decided you want what we have and are willing to go to any length to get it, then you're ready to take certain steps. At some of these, we balked. We thought we could find an easier, softer way, but we could not. With all the earnestness at our command, we beg of you to be fearless and thorough from the very start. Some of us have tried to hold on to our old ideas, and the result was nil until we let go absolutely. Remember that we deal with alcohol, cunning, baffling, powerful. Without help, it is too much for us. But there is one who has all power. That one is God. May you find him now. Half measure availed us nothing. We stood at the turning point. We asked his protection and, compare, and care with complete abandon. Here are the steps we took, which are suggested as a program of recovery. One. We admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. Two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Five, admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Seven, humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. Eight, made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. 
Nine, made direct demands to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Ten, continued to take personal inventory when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Eleven, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Twelve, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we tried to carry this message into to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all of our affairs. Many of us exclaimed, what in order? I cannot go through with it. Do not be discouraged. None among us have been able to maintain anything like perfect adherence to these principles. We are not saints. The point is that we're willing to grow along spiritual lines. The principles we have set down are guides to progress. We claim spiritual progress rather than spiritual perfection. Our description of the alcoholic, the chapter of the agnostic, and our personal adventures before and after make clear three pertinent ideas. A, that we were alcoholic and could not manage our own lives. B, that probably no human power could have relieved our alcoholism. And C, that God could and would if he were sought. Could and would if he were sought. All right. So here we are. And um, what's going on, everybody? Let's see who's, let's see who's here. Let's say hello for a second. We've got the Catskill Hillbilly, Brandon. Diet Water, T. Parker, and uh, oh yeah, T. Parker, Renegade Cards, A. B. Mr. Logan, Dan Z. Hello, Heel Brews, and um, One Soup, Barbie Cat Crash, and uh, Micah Dyer, dude. Bathel is here from beautiful Ireland. Piff and uh, Hinterlander and Moon Time. So, as you know, it's uh, it's Owl's birthday today, right? And so I was like, nah. I did a stream earlier today for a little bit, and then I was like, kind of. I already said I might not show, and you know, we were going to do this tomorrow night, and then, then Shane, I was on Instagram, and uh, Shane Auckland, aka Skate Rats. So I'm going to give this, this one's dedicated to uh, Shane because uh, Shane Auckland, if you don't know, is Skate Rats. And um, I was going through his thing and I noticed he had a post up and it was this, dude. It was this week is Mental Health Week. 84%, 84 men a week take their own lives. 75% of suicides are male. Men are less likely to get help, but speaking up saves lives. Let's encourage them to speak up, not man up. And uh, yeah, dude, so I, I saw that about 30 minutes ago, and I was like, all right, dude, I got to show up, right? Because again, it's not about me, dude. I mean, I'm okay today. Like, I am okay today. Everything's fine. Actually, it's a wonderful day. It's Owl's birthday. Had the parents over, made cupcakes, and did the whole birthday thing. So life life is good. Life is super good. But then when I saw that, I, I'm, I realized that, like, people are suffering, man. And, uh, and then I kind of read the numbers, and I go, 84, 84 a week, dude, right? 75% of those are males, dude. And and why 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 would that number why is that so out of whack? And and again is is mental health is uh is not viewed very what's the word I'm looking for? It's not given it's 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 shunned or shamed and I, and I don't see any need to shame mental health, man. Is is as a person who's experienced his own mental health issues right like you know i'm pretty open about it because that's just me like i'm i'm not an anonymous dude i'm an open book i'm i'm pretty much willing to share my life or i wouldn't be doing youtube that's for sure right and as you know like eight years sober i kind of had my own mental breakdown and had to face my own depression which i had uh been basically ignoring by pretending, by being like, yeah, I suffer. For, it, it's weird how we do it as as people, as human beings, like how we we pretend we're addressing a problem by addressing a problem through like comedy and, and being cynical and, and off offhanded in our nature. And so, you know, I suffered a lot longer than I needed to. And, and you know, what they say is the uh, 
Thank you, Moon Time. I appreciate that. And um, we suffer a lot longer than we need to. And why do we do that? It's, uh, you know, part of it is is because there's no help out there on, on a certain level. There's, as we know, is, is there's not a lot of help. If you truly have mental health issues, like, yeah, it's, it, you don't know what where to go. Where are you going to go? You're going to go to some, where are you going? I don't know. And, and so again, as I just want people who are, who are suicidal, who are on the edge, look, there is suicide prevention lines all over the place. They're 1-800 numbers, dude. There's no shame in calling, dude. It's totally anonymous, dude. You can get the help you need. They'll get you to where you go because your average bear doesn't know where to go. And, and so a lot of us deal with our mental health issues by medicating ourselves, right? We, we, uh, we take drugs, we take alcohol, we gamble, we, we pick bad partners, we eat, overeat food, we do dangerous activities. We try to, we try to mask our mental health issues and, and that works for many of us for quite some time. And, and then it, it doesn't, and we're left with a lot of bad options, like until we realize that, that there's no shame in, in being there. Hey, Shane, right on. Stoked you're here, brother. And uh, so we realize that, that there is help out there, and it's us. We're, we're, we have to be each other's help. Like, and when someone's really suffering, right, when someone's really suffering from mental health issues, the first, the first person they have to face is, is themselves, right? And that's the hardest person to face, right? Because that's the person who's got to make the phone call, right? Like, like, like most people are masking their, like really suicidal people aren't telling you about it. They're probably looking pretty shiny, a lot of them and being like, oh, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's great. And they might have families. They might have nice cars. They might be athletes. There was that, I think there was that young skater dude who did himself in, I, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think it was the kid who did the handrail and uh, the big kinked handrail dude. And, and, you know, you look at that dude, that guy's like a pro skater. He's coming up and, and all of a sudden he checks out. Why does he check out? First of all, because he's afraid to go talk to his friends or maybe he talks to his friends and he doesn't realize that how serious it is when someone talks to you and they go, Hey, look, man, I'm suffering here. I'm, I'm suffering these, these suicidal thoughts. I'm suffering depression. I'm in over my head with my own life and, and I don't know what to do. Or maybe it's just offhanded over a couple beers or whatever it may be. I think our job is as, as friends and, and people who care is to, May take that moment seriously. Now, do I think that the way to go about it is to jump on it and be like, oh my God, and start calling and doing, making it worse for that person? No, but I think that, that, that what we do is as people who deal with it is we begin to build a net for that person. And we, and we look how we're going to catch that person who is a person that we love, who is suffering, right? And it's not to, to, to call people that are going to put it more, put them in more danger, right? Parents, maybe that's maybe not a good thing to do. Maybe you call somebody who's suffered themselves. For example, maybe you call the suicide prevention hotline for them. And, and that's a, like a little bit of where people don't understand is, is I think there's this weird thing where people think, that the person who is suicidal or suffering has to be the one to dial the phone. I, you can call them as a friend or a loved one or whatever, and, and, and ask them for help of what to do and the guidance on where we're at. But the trick with, with this thing is, is again, as I speak from witnessing this and a number of people and my own friend just recently killed himself is the, the really suicidal people, aren't going to tell you, dude. And that's, that's the trouble. Right. And the reason they're not going to tell you is because they're, they're afraid of the stigma of it. 
which is which is we're, we're, for those of us who are living, which is the tricky part. And and so we have to talk about it. We it's a very uncomfortable conversation. It, it is a very uncomfortable conversation because look, when someone takes their own life, they're gone, man. I don't think, you know, and I have my own feelings about that. So I try to, I'm trying to get on the front of this whole thing, right? I'm trying to get on the front side of this whole thing and open the conversation up. And, and that's really what started this live stream six months ago was realizing how much people were suffering from isolation, from financial fears, from fear, 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 fear. And realizing people don't have anywhere to go and, and, and people don't have like I'm lucky I got my little family here we do our family thing I have my own little built-in unit to survive isolation with but the last year we really got pushed down down the corridor of isolation and so we have to to open up the conversation and we have to let people know that it's okay to have mental health issues it's okay to have suicidal thoughts because it's it's we have them for those. If you don't consider yourself lucky, man, if you're a person who doesn't wake up in the day and have any dark thoughts about themselves, man, just be grateful. Be grateful. I don't have that experience. I have a blessed life. Dude, I live in a sunny reality. I have beautiful family, beautiful children. I serve. I got friends. I skate. I live a live a, a life of of joy and happiness. Yet, underneath the whole thing is like I suffer from the dark thoughts. You know, the dark thoughts of of inadequacy. The dark thoughts of like I don't know what to do next. The dark thoughts. The dark thoughts. The dark thoughts don't even need to have a name or a label or anything. They're just dark thoughts. And I'll tell you, the darkest thought that that people have is the fact that they can't stop the dark thought. Like, I, I, it seems weird, but but people don't want to have dark thoughts. I don't want to be bombed. I don't want to be, like, bombed on a beautiful day for, like, no reason. Like, I don't have the thing because it's not only my mind, it's part of my bioelectrical spacesuit. Like, my body isn't firing right. It's sending the wrong hormones or endorphins or whatever you have that's so you're you're not operating a hundred percent so diet is hugely important and that's where we can help people a lot and again is is sugar is really like a depressant alcohol is a depressant most drugs are are a depressant so 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 the danger with all these things is is you have to operate with love right you have to let people know that there's a place for them in your heart and there's no shame, there's no guilt, there's just a person willing to love another person. Because let me tell you, dude, people that are depressed and suicidal and suffering from mental health issues, their lack of self-love is, is very much at the forefront of their reality. And that's, you know, a lot of like sobriety and all these things is, is, is that you hear it a lot in these things is let us love you till you can love yourself thing. And, and, and it really is true is, is that's why it's a service oriented path is, is you have to be willing to let other people love you so that you can release the guilt and shame of your own experience. And, 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 it's all different for all sorts of other people, dude. Some people have had really gnarly things happen to them and had really heavy experiences and they don't need to be judged on it. They just need somebody to love them with that problem. And again is, is yeah, man is, is it, it, it is this thing that we have to be willing to talk about. Well, I, what I would say, Jules Luds, is the dark thoughts can dis disappear surfing, but that's not the answer. Again, that's just another addiction. That's just another masking of the thing. And that's what I'm talking about is why do people do themselves in? 
why do people do themselves? I know we can't ask any of them really because they did the job, but you can ask to some of them who didn't pull it off. And, and basically it, it's the stuff stops working. The stuff stops working, whatever it is, the motorcycles, the surfboards, the, the, the bong hits, the, the, the six packs, the, 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 uh, the, the, the supermodels, the, the super studs, whatever it is, the gambling, whatever it is, stops working. And all you are left with is your own darkness. And, and that's where most people do themselves in is because their medicine doesn't work anymore. And, and look, a lot of people, a lot of people who do themselves in are athletes who no longer can athlete. You know what I mean? Like their, their medicine was athleticism. And unfortunately, we get older, dude. Trust me, I struggle with this on a level. Like, you know, I'm 52, dude. I still get out there and skate, but I've kept my myself in check with where I am and where I'm going. So like I don't I'm I can stay tuned in, but you you know, someone who's like gnarly and then breaks themselves off and they can't chase their medicine and they've been to the hospital, like that's a whole different beast. People that have are, have broken themselves off from their athletic experience. And now they're in a pharmaceutical area of their life, man, that's a tough gig, dude. My friend who killed himself recently, that was his gig. He went in for a hip replacement surgery. They issued him pharmaceuticals. He got, he got a little bit spun out on that stuff. Couldn't reel himself back in, was too ashamed to ask for help because he was like a, a pillar of the community. That's what I'm saying. My friend who did himself in six weeks ago was a pillar of the community. He was the dude you called for help. That's what I'm saying is, is a lot of these, a lot of people who take their lives, especially males are people that are people that are pillars of the community that, that, that take on the brunt of everybody else's experience or the person that takes on that weight and, and it's like, Oh, let me solve your problem while they, they don't take care of their own problem. And why don't they take care of their own problem? You, imagine you being a person who is a pillar of their community, a leader in their community. And it doesn't have to be a big community. It could be a four-person group of people. It could be all the way to the top, all the way to a little group of people. And you're the leader of that group of people. You, you're, you're the one who handles the business, right? And then your turn comes up where you need help. You need some help, man. You, you, whatever's going on is going on. But because you're the pillar, you have to you have to climb down off the pillar and allow yourself to not be the pillar. And, and with ego and all of these things, many people can't step off the pillar and allow themselves to ask for help. And, and again, as I always say it on this, this, this thing we do here is, is is you got to ask for help and you've got to be willing to let people ask you for help. And, and it, it's a, it's a tough gig. It's a tough gig. I'm at the point where drinking and drugs stop working. I went to AA twice, but I might go back, but nervous. You just got to roll back in there, Michael. You just roll back in there. There's no one, dude. It's just people like me. No one's, we're just stoked. You made it back, dude. Look, as a person who sits on the other side of this reality, dude, who's who's bolted his life back together, duct taped his life back together, overcome drugs and alcohol, dealt with his own depression and mental health issues. Let me tell you, on this side of it, there's nothing but love, man. There's no there's no shame. It's okay not to be. It's fine not to be sober, dude. And it's where this isn't. There's it's on one size does not fit. Sober is a different. Like, dude, there, there's a difference between people who can happily drink and mind their own business and smoke their weed and not cause any. It's sobriety is about you realizing you can't maintain your own happiness. Look, it's it's very, very clear. It's about unmanageability, dude, and the unmanageability of your own thoughts. Imagine. I don't know. Again, is it's that thing is like, I don't have the ability to dictate my thoughts. What I've learned with sobriety and dealing with my own mental health issues, my thoughts and feelings are not me, but that's advanced technology. 
I mean, if you've got that button where you realize your 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 opinion of yourself doesn't matter either, and you can deal with yourself and not take yourself so seriously, like that's advanced, man. Most people think their feelings are real, dude. And those real feelings, there's the outside feelings and then there's the inside feelings, dude. And everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, people that suffer ha- live in two different worlds at the same time. And that's a lot of, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of Eckhart Tolle. And it's, that's like spirituality 101, dude. Of course, so Eckhart Tolle, like Eckhart Tolle, brought it all down and spread it into ABCs, dude. So I give that car a lot of credit for doing that, man. But it's that thing of like most people that suffer live with two mental dialogues going in their head. They have the projection dialogue of I'm the bright, shiny one and everything's fine or, or I'm the victim. The other, the opposite side of the bright, shiny guy is the professional victim that's suffering so much that it's impenetrable, right? And, and and then there's the dialogue inside of themselves is the person with this other dialogue going on it all the time. And, and I think that the, for me, how I overcame the thing was to stop pretending, was to look, for me personally, it was publicly admitting that I suffer from depression. Nobody who wants to admit that there's no like happy harbor for that thing of like, oh, you know, I suffer from like depression and like, but what you find out Look, I, I, I can speak. I can speak from. Let me speak from my own experience. When I came out in two thousand eighteen, right? It was right around June two thousand eighteen. I admitted that I suffer from depression and it's debilitating my life and it's it's negatively impacting me. When I came out with that and publicly made that video, you can go back into my archives, dude. It's a gnarly video, dude. It's the heaviest video I've ever put up on this channel. Dude, my life was literally falling apart because I refused to admit my own depression. Dude, my wife didn't want to deal with me pretending I didn't. My children don't want to be around that. Thank you, Dan, Michaela, Michael. And um, so when I made that video, I went for it, right? I went because that's the only way I knew to get out of it was to tell the truth. You know what I found out? was there's a bunch of loving, beautiful, I got more love. Actually, it almost brings me to tear. I got more love and support from that one video than any video I've ever made. Like genuine, like, hey, thank you. Hey, I suffered too. Hey, you're going to be okay. I didn't get any trolling. I got real people that came to my, came to me and said, hey, we got you, dude. We got you. Take some time. Do your thing. Let us let us support you. Let us support you, dude. And and that's what I've found on the other uh, the other side of all of these issues: houses burning down, wife wanting to leave you, depression, drugs and alcohol. Is on the other side of all tragedy is people that have experienced tragedy that want to help you overcome your tragedy. And so, but unfortunately where we're at, especially with this suicide issue, this epidemic of suicide in our, in our society right now is we can't, we can't wait around to have that experience to be of service to people. We really can't. What we need to do is do exactly what Shane did today. Shane went and posted that on his Instagram thing. It got to me. I'm here dedicating my hour to that. And I've always ended at the thing by, by talking about it because we have to, we have to be bold and admit that it's a real issue. It's a real problem. 84 people, 84 people a week kill themselves. That's, that's not ODs. And that's people like straight up, like killing themselves. That's not people like you know, who knows what goes on out in the highways and all this stuff. This is people just straight up doing themselves. 84 people a week, dude. What's, what's the number on that? That's, that's, uh, that's like what? 320 people a month. That's, that's, uh, that's almost 4,000 people a year, 4,000 people a year, dude. Gone, like not here. And, and I would, and I will argue this is, the problem with that is those are probably the people we need the most, man. 
because they know something that many of us don't. They know how dark it is. See, the, the whole thing that's pushed on our society, which is, is even more troubling, is that, that you're supposed to be happy thing, which I would say causes more people to be depressed and suicidal than anything is like, you're supposed to be happy. You have this, you have this, you have this. So you're supposed to be happy. You're not supposed to be. How could you, how could you be depressed with all of that? And it's like, no, we need the, we need these people to, to come back to us and not do that. We need those extra 4,000 people every year to tell us like, Hey bro, like all the trinkets in the world can't, help that. What is wrong with me? What is wrong with me is I'm alone and I'm isolated in my head. I might be the captain of the football. How many like captains of football teams do you hear about like that, that do themselves in? There was one of our early, early tribe members here when I was early YouTube, dude, early YouTube, who was like the captain of the football team at some big university, dude. And his buddies like that dude, like did himself in, dude. He'd reached out, he'd contacted me and the whole thing. Like I've had a lot of like interesting experiences on this side of the camera. And what I'll tell you is it's for real, dude. And, and if, so if you're out there, right, let me talk to you. Cause I've, I've been sort of talking to the, your, your peripheral people, right. You know, if you're that person, right. If you're the person who, who feels suicidal, feels depressed, feels overwhelmed with mental health issues, feels that they can't break out of their own dark thoughts, is trapped inside of their mind. Dude, just ask for help, man. It's It sounds so basic. It is literally pick up the phone call and call somebody. If Call the, I, I'm telling you the why it seems like we're like, hey, call the, the suicide prevention line, like whatever it is. That is the most anonymous way to do it. If you're too worried about someone finding out that you got this going on, that's the, the easiest, most anonymous way to do it. But dude, call somebody, dude, and break the spell. It is, look, I don't get here 11 years later without asking David Brune and Joe Shaughnessy for help in front of a liquor store. None of, I don't have owl. I don't have my wife. I don't have Mike, the cat. I don't have any of it, dude. I probably like, they say you get sober the day before you're going to die, dude. And I firmly believe that. So the day, all right, so let's go there for a second. Let me be the person who, who's I'm talking to right now. So the day I got so the day before I got sober, the day before I asked help and got sober, if I looked at my life like a postcard, right? Like, you know, just imagine your life as a postcard. I don't know what palm trees and whatever you got in your postcard. My postcard, and I clearly remember this in my head, my reality of what was in store for my life the day before I got sober was just a black postcard, nothing on it, just black. No, no, nothing, nothing. No skateboards, no six packs, no, no. My self-fulfilling prophecy at that point, my, my manifestation skill at that point was a black postcard, just the absence of light, right? So when I asked those two dudes for help in front of the liquor store, None of this that I experienced now was on the radar. None of this. The day before I asked those two dudes for help, I wanted, I wanted to die, dude. Literally, dude. Like I woke, I used to wake up every day and pray for mushroom clouds. I used to remember sitting at the top of the world at the voodoo bowl where I was living. I would wake up and overlook LA and just be let today be the day that the mushroom clouds happen. Like that kind of a darkness, not because, because there, I just had no answers left. I had no way to, to do anything for myself. I was all out of options. I was, it's a, it's, it's that thing. It says right in the deal, dude. It says it right here, dude. Until we let go. Absolutely. 
Some of us have tried to hold on to our old ideas and the result was nil till we let go. I had no more ideas. I had no more ideas. I didn't have a desire for anything. Like zero desire, dude. I didn't want to skate anymore. I didn't want to surf anymore. I didn't want to drink anymore. I didn't want to smoke weed anymore. I didn't want to do coke anymore. I didn't want to breathe anymore. I didn't want to take a leak anymore. I didn't want to do anything. All I wanted to do was see mushroom clouds. That's dark, dude. Dark. And I'm telling you, dude, like you, you see this guy all like tan and like happy with his little child and like, yeah, dude. Like I got a second chance of life. And the only way I got a second chance of life is I asked somebody for help. I asked two strangers in front of a liquor store for help. And those two human beings just opened up their hearts to me and gave me a life, man. God, that's so heavy, dude. Like the heaviness of that is so radical, dude. And so what I'm trying to tell you is if you're that dude if, or that woman or that whatever you may be out there and you know what I'm talking about, you live in that, your black postcard of your future, it can all change. But it can't change if you think everyone's a mind reader. Nobody else out on the planet can see that black postcard. People may not may be aware that you're, you're rolling around with a black postcard, but you're probably were pretty isolated like I was. You're probably pretty hostile. I was so hostile to the world at that time. You weren't coming and and dude, my literally my phone message was like. F off. Don't leave a message, dude. And all I wanted was someone to do, come and help me, dude. And so it's this thing where, where, where until you're willing to ask for help, dude, I don't know who's getting in there. So it, there's no shame in asking for help, dude, unless you want like a shot at it, dude. So, so let's just say nothing else has worked out at this point. Nothing's worked. She's gone. He's gone. They're gone. The payments are overdue. I, I, I'm i failing on this. I got fired. Blah, 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 whatever. I can't control my mind. Every day sucks, dude. Call someone. Ask for help and see if maybe that is all it took. And it's a journey. It's not like there's like a blah. But I tell you what, it is in retrospect. It is literally a split second decision i i had a consciousness to make that's it i asked two strangers for help in front of a liquor store please help me dude and those did save my life man and so don't think that you can't be in either one of those spaces right I've been fortunate enough in my life to be on the other side of that space, right? I've been the dude with the black postcard and I've been the person who's been able to pick up the phone for the dude with the black postcard. You know what I'm saying? And so this life thing is super, super precious and super, super valuable. Look, again, I'll tell you for the dude, for the person sitting with the black postcard as their tomorrow, If I had not asked for help that next day, I wouldn't have known the greatest joys of my life, right? See, part of, I think, the depression is, is like when we're young, we experience great joys if we're lucky enough. And, and maybe we medicated ourselves into great joy or ease of comfort and the whole thing. And we think that's it. I definitely thought that was it. If you told me my life after that conversation in front of the liquor store was going to be the best part of my life. Again, I couldn't have, I couldn't have even fathomed that concept. If you would, if you had been there, if those two dudes had stood in front of me in the liquor store, be like, dude, let me tell you, dude, you're going to have like a, a child you love more than anything. You're going to have like a wife that you love, a daughter you love, you're going to have a whole life you love. And yeah, it's going to come with a bunch of problems and bad things are going to happen. And this is going to happen, but you're going to persevere. You're going to stay sober. You're going to be stoked. You're going to be here on your son's birth, on your son's sixth birthday, 
talking about preventing suicide. I would have been like, well, you're mad. You're mad. I'm not, the, none of this is going to happen. And um, thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. So, so that's what I'm getting at is, is we get, if we're lucky enough to, to ask for help, we get a second chance, man. We get a second chance at this or a third or fourth or fifth chance, whatever chance it may be. It's never too late. Look, the only way it's too late is if you finish the game. And I'm telling you, dude, as a person who just lost a, a beautiful human being like six weeks ago, it sucks, man. It sucks, dude. That dude didn't think he had anything to offer, dude. We all have something to offer, dude. So you may be all, all alone and, and this, dude. You know what you might have to offer is just a smile to a cashier. That's why I'm always about the name tag thing. Like people think that they don't matter, dude. Yeah, you might not have some in-depth relationship with 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 who I, wait, I gotta get my batteries running low. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. We got battery power. Mate, we'll make it. Look, you may not you may not have some like relationship and family and this and that, but I'm telling you, dude, you can count to the world by just going and being cool to some cashier, dude. Yesterday I I, I had this cool conversation with this cashier, dude. I put a smile on her face, chit chat with her for what? 30 seconds. 30 seconds, I, I gave this person real energy and I made her smile. You think you're not a value? You think that smile doesn't ripple through the ether? That's that's it. We are the human Tesla coil. So you that, have, that are thinking about turning off your human Tesla coil forever, please don't. Please don't. We, we, we need you out here. Because you know more than all of us how precious this is. Because you that darkness you have isn't because this isn't precious. It's because it's too overwhelmingly precious. That's the thing. See, the, the sensitive people, they don't want to take themselves out because they don't value any of this. They overvalue. It's, it's so overwhelmingly beautiful and valuable that they don't know how to be happy in it. And it's a tough gig, man. It's like, it's a tortured reality, but we can, we can help each other. It's life is a team sport, man. It really is. It's, I can't do it without you. I'm not doing this without Shane and skate rats today, dude, putting up some posts on their Instagram account, like reminding me that like, no, it's not, this isn't about me. It's about us that, 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 that if I didn't, what I say when I was laying there with my wife, dude, my owl's playing with his new birthday toys and I'm sitting there and I'm like, Burks, it's been an all day thing. I was laying there and I go, I was like, ah, oh, and I don't really want to do the live stream. And I was like, but what if there's like somebody out there who's like waiting and that's their only, the, the last person not to show up is some, some dude like me. The last person to fail them was, the illusion on his sober Wednesday thing, you know? And uh, I was like, no, I, I'm going to show up, dude, because I'm going to show up for me because I was that person. Once I'm showing up for me, I'm showing up for the dude who was sitting on top of that mountain over there at an empty swimming pool, wishing for mushroom clouds to end it all. I'm showing up for that dude. That dude, I know that dude. I I know that dude. It breaks my heart that that dude used to sit up there and be there. And that dude didn't know this dude was ever going to exist. Did you get what I'm saying? Like that dude who used to sit at the top of that mountain up there at that empty swimming pool Wishing for mushroom clouds had no concept. This dude, this guy right here existed. No concept. This dude was in, in him. 
was within me. Had no idea that I could be a dad. No idea I could have. I was going to have a wife. No idea I was going to be living in suburbia, dude. No idea my house was none of that, dude. Didn't have any idea that I was going to be the bowl cut maintenance guy. None of it, dude. None of that. And I, I can't talk to that dude because that dude wouldn't have listened to me either, dude. But I can talk to you because you're here. And we can do this. We're all in this together, man. We are all in this together. Yeah, it's gnarly, dude. I'm in a situation, not drugs, but education thing where I have to have top educated people to help me right now. And they are for free. And I'm very grateful. Good for you, Standing Foot. And, and thank you for showing up for me. Right on, LJ. Right on, man. It's gnarly, dude. It's uh, Diamond Souls. Hold the line. It's gnarly, dude. It's no joke. This human thing is very precarious, man. Things happen really quick, dude. Things happen really quick. And people have to... to to experience the quickness life can change on a dime dude like that but we also know that we can get through like i think part of the uh, thing that that right on by by link stay stinky <laughs> right on johnny gems dude Time relatively speeds up. It relatively slows down, too. It's just, it's very interesting how it all works. But look, many people learn great things by suffering. Unfortunately, it's part of the human weirdness of it all is like the courage to suffer and overcome, man. Like, bravo to anyone who has suffered and overcome. It's, it's no small feat, man. It, it really isn't, dude. A strong, it's the wrong stream for that, dude. Uh, Lemmert, I, I originally came for the bull cut maintenance guy, but I related to your preaching. I respect and love it. Thank you. Stoked, stoked, uh, stoked, stoked you got through the gateway. It, it's an interesting thing, man, is, is, look, it's the, it's the, uh, it's the thing where I remember, dude, early sobriety. I remember being like early sobriety, dude, and at, and not knowing what I was supposed to do, dude, hoping for a mission from God, right? Hoping that God was going to give me a mission, right? If, again, that like you can't, you can't make any of this up. If you told me, again, even then, even nine months sober that like, all right the mission god's gonna have for you dude is you're gonna become a youtube dude who gets under the wire and gets into every into people's like homes and hearts via haircut i would have been like what are you talking about like what are you what are you talking about like it still baffles me dude it still baffles me that i'm the bowl cut maintenance guy dude like it 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 can only be God. It can only be God because it doesn't make any sense to my mortal mind. It, it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense to me, but that's why it works. Right. Because nobody's look, nobody's suffers more than the comedian. Right. Everyone thinks the funny man's the one, the funny man, the funny man tells the funny jokes. The funny man's suffering the most, dude, because the funny man is telling them, so, telling the jokes so that they don't have to suffer, right? Like make other people laugh so you don't have to suffer. So again, it's, it's the uh, rip Chris Farley. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Eight, one, two, three, ABC, Johnny. You really help put things into a better perspective, healthy perspective. Help sees how to approach our addictions. Yeah. There, there's a way to approach it. And the, uh, the only way I know to approach it is with love and honesty. Dude, look, if those two, two dudes in front of the liquor store lied to me, I'm not here. 
The fact is they didn't lie to me. They loved me enough to tell me the brutal truth about what I was up against. They didn't go, oh, bro, like it's going to be unicorns and rainbows and this and that and blah, blah, blah. They were like, look, dude, like you're signing up for the gnarliest adventure ever. Are you ready? Dude? It's going to be brutal. But you're going to get through it if you choose to. If you want to get through this, you will get through the stick with us. And I was like, all right, dude. All right, I'll stick through through it with you, dude. And um, all right, so this is this is this is one of those things. And I now we'll switch to a little bit of the sober thing on the way out the door, dude. So when I was early sobriety, man, my uh my uh my spiritual advisor Joe said he's like, pick two things that are just a little bit out of context, but in context enough with reality so that you can see God working in your life, right? Like two things that you pick so that you'll see that God is working in your life. It could be, you know, pink Lamborghinis or well, those, that's a little like little too like pink Lamborghinis is a little bit too rare, but it could be, you know, barn owls or, you know, golden retrievers, whatever, dude. It, it's something that you would might see, but you're not going to see every day. So, right. So I was like one of those, I was still a pretty big of a smart ass. Right. And I fully forgot about this till the other day. And so I was like a super smart ass and I go rainbows and unicorns, dude. That's how I know God's working my life. Dude was rainbows and unicorns, dude. And you got to understand at this point in my life, there's no, rainbows and unicorns <laughs> not that's not even around dude i've just been a smart aleck i remember the first time like like about a month after that i was getting into the groove of sobriety and i looked down and there was this piece of paper on the ground and it had like a, a unicorn on it and i was like oh wow there's god in my life dude and then i started to really look for it and like so like as I prog- and I had forgotten about this till the other day. So I was sitting, I don't know, I was having a rough day last week or whatever. And I was thinking about all this early sobriety stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, dude, I got to tell people about like picking two things. So, you know, God is working in your life. Right. And I was like, yeah, my two things were rainbows and unicorns. And I was like looking at owls laundry and like one of his like favorite t-shirts is a unicorn riding a Tyrannosaurus Rex with a rainbow shooting over it, right? It's it's everywhere in my life right now. My son's favorite things are like rainbows and unicorns and dinosaurs and stuff. And I was like, whoa, I've, I haven't been able to see it for a while because I sort of forgot about it. Like my entire life, if you walked into my house, there's rainbows and unicorns everywhere, dude. Like everywhere, dude. Like all over the place. It's like freaky. But it goes back to this thing where like in the beginning of my sobriety, I set these two things into my projection real, if you will, so that I knew God was communicating with me, right? Because I needed to know that, and my my guy was explaining to me, it's so that you know that God is communicating with you. And that when you see it, you'll know that you're on, it's like a signpost. So my advice is for people in early sobriety is, is find, pick two things that are not readily available, but, but will show up every now and then to be your touchstones to God's love for you as you roam around your reality. And then one day you'll be getting out of the shower and you'll realize everything around your reality is covered with rainbows and unicorns, dude. Like I I sat there the other day and was like, whoa, I had forgotten about my smart assness, dude. Because again, that's what we do. Cardinals, that's a good one, dude. Dolphins and didgeridoos. There you go. That's a solid one. That's a good one. Dolphins and didgeridoos, dude. Didgeridoos are powerful, man. I feel like the unicorn is symbolic of how you manifest your own happiness. Yeah. It's it's it turned out to be like me being a total douche. 
like literally, dude, like I was being a douche to me, like truly stumbling into something. Cause it, you got to understand like where I was at in that stage of it, like the odds of bumping into like rainbows and unicorns, except for like a random, like rainstorm at the right angle, like we're pretty low. Once you start, the more you see God, the more God see Luke, dude. Ah, what just happened, man? Did we lose? Well, with that, so we did just like, oh yeah, Melanie, 11 years, 11 years, 11 and a half years now. Jeez, man. You told me I was going to be sober 11 and a half years one day at a time. I never would have thought thunk it. So on the way out the door, dude, Shane Auckland, I, I want to thank you for putting your post up onto your, uh, onto your Instagram, dude, which, which reminded me what my primary purpose was today. And, and we do this every Wednesday. So send anyone here, Shane, that you think might find any value in what we do. And we're here on Wednesdays, Pacific standard time at six 30 to, uh, offer a message of hope, a place for that are struggling and uh, and a solution right because we're a little tribe there's 62 of us here that that believe that we can all work together dude t parker good if your dad can do it anyone can do it five years yeah so it's that thing of like look wherever you are in the united states of america i can only speak for the united this was a good one tonight thanks ben miller uh, thanks shane and uh, Skate Rats, SK8 Rats on Instagram, dude. Go give Shane some love because he made this one happen tonight, unbeknownst to himself, dude. And um, look, dude, wherever you are in the United States of America, there is an AA Central Office. If you struggle from alcohol, drug addiction, call AA Central Office wherever you are, USA. There's an 800 number, and you will get a person like me or a woman like me, or she, her, him, Zerky like me, and uh, they'll help you get to where you need to be, and they'll probably help you get through the night of drinking or at least get the next day off to a, a beautiful start with some support and some help. And if you are suicidal and suffering, dude, please, please call a suicide prevention hotline, call a friend, call, call just call anybody, dude. Call anybody, whatever it is, is please don't, don't make a temporary situation a permanent solution, dude. And it might not seem temporary from where you're at, but the solution really is. It's uh, to, to quote Box of Rain, Grateful Dead is uh, such a short time to be here and such a long, long time to be gone, man. It's heavy, dude. Like life is short. And the end is the end. So please reach out for help. And uh, the most the greatest thing you can do to help another person is ask another person for help. So um, God bless you. Thanks for being here. And uh, let's all take care of each other, dude. It's super important. Good night.